Hi, my name is Chris Nelson. Welcome to our online e-learning class. And in today's segment, I'm going to go through the warm-up stretches with you so you get an opportunity to sit down in front of your phone or your computer screen and do the stretches. So when I was a student, we would do something called the Daily Dozen. And uh, June Rhee, who was um, the first person to bring Taekwondo from Korea to the United States, he is really the founder of our system, so uh, he trained Grandmaster Worley, and Grandmaster Worley trained me, and now I'm training you, so that's kind of our family tree and our legacy. Uh, and that first, when he first came, that was 1954, and what he would have his students is every day at home do what they called the Daily Dozen. It was a dozen different stretches. So I'm going to bring you through the Daily Dozen today, and you can do half of them, or you can do all of them, I'll, I'll leave you whatever you have time for. Uh, but I'm just going to show it to you so you have that passed on to you. So if you want to be more flexible, if you want to be able to kick higher, if you want to be able to kick people in the head, then these are the stretches that you want to do to get to that point. Um, if you're older like me, I'm 52, uh, as we get older, our body starts to shrink and contract and get tighter. And a lot of times when people feel old, it's because they're so tight. And they, and, but stretching really counter, counterbalances that. And stretching is the thing that, one of the things, aside from staying physically active, that helps people live a lot uh, longer and live uh, to where they feel like they just are more youthful. They got more flexibility, more pliable. They don't get injured as easy, all that kind of thing. So uh, the, the best thing to do, especially in the winter, is we want to warm up a little bit. So uh, you can start with uh, 15 jumping jacks. I'm going to do some squats today. So we'll just do 10 squats. Put your feet shoulder width apart and hands up. We're just going to go one, two, three. I hope you're doing this with me. I want you just watching. You can do it with me. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, legs are kind of warm. Shake them a little. Now, we're going to have a seat. The first one we're going to do is what we call the half hurdler stretch. So I remember when I was in track in, in high school, they would do this stretch, and that's not a bad stretch either. Uh, but in martial arts, we, we spend a lot of time doing the half roller stretch, so it's tucking this foot in instead of being behind us. What that does is it isolates the hamstring muscle. Hamstring is really important for all the kicks that we do. If you have tight hamstrings, it really makes it harder. So we're going to isolate that. I'm going to point the toe. Sometimes we pull the toe back, but then that stretches the calf. So for this series, we want to point the toe so we're stretching the back of the hamstring. So take a deep breath. Exhale. Again, take a deep breath. Exhale. Okay, stretch with me. So we're going to reach out, grab your ankle. Sometimes I tell students, grab their pant leg and just pull. And when we stretch, we want to hold it for at least 30 seconds. So if you go down and then back up, down and back up, it's not, gonna, it's not really going to do any good. We have to give that muscle a chance to relax. That muscle will start to elongate. So after about 20 seconds, you'll start being able to go a little bit more and a little bit more. So we're going to go here and hold it. And if you're able to touch your head to your knee, go ahead and do that. You do kind of want to keep your back straight as you can. I think about getting my chin towards my toes or getting my chin past my kneecap. Can you go a little bit further? And back up. Now we're going to switch. Take a deep breath. Exhale and stretch. So with stretching, if you've ever heard the expression, no pain, no gain, that really applies to stretching. If you're not feeling some discomfort back here, we don't go to the point where you're damaging anything, but it should feel uncomfortable. You're like, ah, that kind of hurts. That's what you want to do. Get there and hold it. Don't stop. Don't give up. So again, you want to go there for 20 to 30 seconds. And then back up. Now we're going to do feet together. Same thing. But what it's going to do is it's going to still work on the hamstring, but also works a lot on the lower back. So take a deep breath. Exhale. I like this for like four to seven year olds a lot because... Um, it help, it's hard to cheat, it's hard to have bad form. Um, so we just get the legs out, 
You want to grab your pant leg, grab your ankle, and just pull. Again, think about having your chin go towards your ankles. You're going to hold it for 30 seconds. Sometimes with kids, I'll tell them to count. Count to 30. That helps them kind of stay focused. And back up. Next thing we're going to do is feet apart. So you point your toes. Again, take a deep breath. Exhale, and we're stretching to the middle. Kind of breathe. Stretch is a time where you should be able just to kind of relax and unwind. If you've had a stressful day, just think about, you know, we don't want to be chit-chatting while we stretch. I always tell my students, just kind of think about just slowing down your heart rate. And back up. And we're going to go left and right. There's two different ways of doing this. I'll do one is we can, same way, grab a pant leg and pull. Try to get your head as close as you can to your leg. And back up. Take a deep breath. The other way is I go here with one hand and over the top with the other. What that does is it also gets the oblique muscles on the side. So I'll do it this way. 30 seconds. Ready to go. And back up. All right, the next one we're going to do is an abdomen stretch. So I'm going to remove my belt so it's not in my way. I'm just going to turn it to the side. I'm going to go over to my stomach. And I'm doing like a push up, and I'm leaving my hips on the floor. And I want to think about having my chin up. Again, 30 seconds. All right, from here, we're going to keep that. I'm going to go down a little bit, but I'm going to turn sideways to get the muscles on the side. So I'm twisting just a little bit. Back to the middle. Now twist this way. Back to the middle. One more time in the middle. And back down. Okay, now we're going to do the splits. And when we do the splits, um, remember it doesn't have to go all the way down. I know you're not gymnasts, right? Um, but when we do the splits, it's working a different muscle group than we've done. We've done a lot of hamstring stretches there. The splits are going to go on the inner part of the thigh, and that's actually ligament. They're a little bit harder. Um, what I like to do is you can get on a slippery floor and wear socks and let your feet slip. You just kind of go out with it. Okay, so now I'm stretching the inner part of the thigh. That's more of ligament than muscle, so it's harder. So it's, if you're not used to doing it, you're probably going to be in a lot of pain right now. So we're just going to go there and hold it. Okay, now once we've been there for a while, we're going to rotate a bit. So we're going to Go back on the heels, and usually you can get another couple inches. I'm going to go a little bit further. The reason you can go farther that way is because now you're shifting it again to more hamstring than ligament. Okay, we're going to go walk to the middle again. All right, now I learned this one from Bill Superfoot Wallace. We're going to walk our hands forward and push your hips forward. That gets just another angle of the hips. And when we go to kick, it's easier to kick higher. Back to the middle. And back up. While I'm here, I'm gonna do one more. We're gonna do the butterfly stretch. So we're gonna put our feet together. And I'm taking my elbows, pushing down on my knees. I remember before I was in martial arts, we used to do this one in basketball, 
And this, for whatever reason, again, if you're not used to it, it's, it's kind of painful. I remember the whole team just screaming every time we would do this one. Now it doesn't bother me because I'm used to it. And then eventually your goal is to get the knees closer to the floor. Sometimes we'll come up in between, give it a break, and then go again. And back up. Okay, so we've done all the floor ones. If uh, you don't have a partner, this is really all you need to do. If you did this every day, every other day, at least four times a week, you would really see a lot of improvement in your flexibility. I like to encourage people to try to do at least every other day because what happens is when you're done stretching, my muscles are going to start tightening up again, right? As soon as I drink coffee, they're going to tighten up a lot and stress is going to tighten them up a lot and they exercise, they tighten up a lot. So um, within really 24 hours, I'm almost back to where I started. So 24 hours later, I want to start stretching it out again. So if you have time, if you want to, you know, um, Kind of let your mind turn off for a while and just do some stretching that'd be great to do every day now if you have a partner if you're at home and you're locked in and there's some wall stretches that were part of the daily dozen i'm going to just lean against the wall and i'm going to have my helper grab my ankle this is a front kick stretch again working on the hamstring and he's just going to raise that up he's going to hold so you want to communicate when it starts being painful a little bit more a little bit more, a little bit more. All right. Hold it there. And go a little bit more as I get loose. I'm going to again hold that for about 30 seconds. And let's go ahead and put it down. And other side. Raise it up. Slowly down. The next one is the side kick stretch. So I'm going to have my feet together, pivot for a side kick, extend the leg out. Now notice on this one, my support foot, the toes have to point the opposite way. So my support foot points to the wall, away from my attacker, and then my kicking foot, I want, I don't want my toes up. I want to roll the hip, so this hip I always tell students when we're doing this, it's easier when people start doing this because again, you're using the hamstring, but that's cheating. So you want to roll the hip so the kneecap points down, the toes point down. You're pulling the toes back. Don't get lazy and point your toes. Pull the toes back. All right, let's raise it up a little bit. All right, good. Now, if your partner is getting sore arms, you can do this, put it on your shoulder and you just rest down the shoulder. Hold that for 30 seconds. All right, slowly down. Make sure it's slowly down and just let go of their leg because then it, it's too fast and people, people get injured. So we do the right leg, raise it up. Slowly down. All right, thanks for your help. So that's it. That is the Junery Daily Dozen. Do that, and in a week or two, you'll start to see some really good gains in your flexibility. I think it'll be good for your stress level. Just relax a little bit, and now you're ready to get on and do some kicking and punching without injury. So have fun. You can do this every day. So long.